What's up, now everyone? Tom Gore in here, and welcome to episode 28 of the F123 Has to Glory. This is the penultimate episode of season 2 of the Driver Career Mode Has to Glory series, and what could potentially be the penultimate episode of this entire series. As you can see, we have a 20. What is it? 91, 100, 201, so 20, a 27 point lead on Sergio Perez as we enter the penultimate race of season two. And as far as the constructors, we are, I believe, 71 points behind, on 79. 79 points behind Red Bull in the constructors with only two races to go. Check out the previous video, the United States Grand Prix where the car was absolutely shocking to drive. And also check out the playlist so that you are caught up with every single thing up until this point. So, we are here in Brazil getting ready for the penultimate race and it could be the championship deciding race. If we, all we need to do is score, I believe... It's two more points. Two more points than Sergio Perez in order to win the championship. And I do believe that that's just in general. If we score two points in this race, we will, I think, become driver's champion. I'm not really sure. Um, but Perez, Perez needs to win. Actually, what am I saying? No, 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 no. We need to score two more points than Sergio Perez regards of what happens with other drivers in order to... Con to pretty much clinch the drivers championship today it's a big episode episode 28 we've only got one more episode after this the portuguese grand prix and as you can see we can't do any more upgrades onto this car even if we wanted to so yeah this is the final time we can upgrade the car but history can be made today let's see if we can make history let's get in to the race weekend Welcome to today's sprint. This is shaping up to be another fantastic weekend. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And the smooth operator, Carlos Sainz, completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Russell, Perez, Norris, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Stroll, Gasly, Thomas, Ocon, Joe, Bottas, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Sargent, and Nick De Vries. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Anthony Davidson is with me once again to take you through today's action. And we have plenty of twists and turns to come over the next hour or so, I'm sure. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position. But are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? One more thing to consider is the strategy element. How far can the drivers push these tyres and who's going to... All right, so we're kicking this episode straight off. We're not wasting any time today. We're going for the sprint race here in Brazil. We qualified P13. The story has been the same story all season long. Our car is strong in the race, but it's absolutely awful in qualifying. And you know how the AIR on F123 overpowered straight line speed, overpowered corner exit speed, and it's just a pain in the ass on this game in qualifying. But here we go. It could be a championship deciding weekend here in Sao Paulo, getting ready for the sprint race. And it is lights out and away we go for the sprint race from p13 on the grid pierre gasly gets a good start so does oscar piastri and my teammate kevin magnuson as we go in towards turn one we're going to take the inside line as we head down the hill in towards turn two we have to make sure that the difference between us and perez and verstappen isn't that much as you pretty much saw uh, verstappen and perez are starting third and fourth i do believe so We've got to try and somehow make sure we outscore one of them in this sprint race today. So as we go in towards lap two, uh, pretty much slipstream, and we're going to dive down the inside on towards Alex Albon in the Aston Martin, and that is P7. 
here in the sprint race. We cannot afford to pretty much let those Red Bulls get away. And as you can see, Perez is in P5. So hopefully, if Russell and Perez fight with each other, then that can only mean good news for us. Uh, as far as Verstappen, Verstappen is in P3, and the two Ferraris are first and second as we have DRS wide open on lap 7 as we're going to dive down the inside of George Russell in the Mercedes, and we lose the back end not once, but twice there on the exit of that corner, and that just shows you how bad the balance is between the front and the rear on this car truly is. George Russell did get past us, but we're going, to, we're going to go down the inside of George Russell on the exit of turn four, and that is P6 here in Brazil with only a lap and a half to go. So hopefully now we can try and catch up to Hamilton and Perez with only one half laps to go. And as you can see, I'm just trying to control the car there. I'm losing the, the back end, you know, in the braking zone. But as you can see, there's the other flag. That's Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton again is out. The race winner from the last episode has retired from the sprint race here in Brazil. And that is not a good start for the Mercedes team. They've had a disastrous season when it comes to reliability. As Carlos Sainz wins the sprint race, it's a Ferrari 1-2. Verstappen takes third. Perez takes fourth. And we're going to come on across the line for fifth place here in Brazil and its damage limitation as far as the points differential is concerned and the Red Bulls haven't gained that many points I believe Verstappen gained six I think Perez gained five and I think we've gained four so it's only a differential of two plus for the Red Bulls as we go in towards the main event and as you can see classifications there the gap has reduced to 26 points so now we've got to try and score one more point then Perez Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with a stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012 and just four years later Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine lefts and six rights for a total of 15 corners. The fastest lap today should have an average speed of around 135 miles per hour if, of course, the weather stays dry until the end of the Grand Prix. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Thomas, Russell, Albon, Magnussen, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Stroll, Ocon, Joe, Liam Lawson, Sargent, Bottas, Sonoda, De Vries, and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And with me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. And they can do it for sure, as long as they don't dwell too much on the position. At the end of the day, there's only one way to go racing, and that's to give it everything you've got. Either your best is good enough to stay in the hunt, or it's not. There's no point giving any less than 100%. Welcome to the grid here in Sao Paulo, getting ready for the Brazilian Grand Prix. And I've said this in multiple uh, career mode episodes around here. This is the circuit of champions. The amount of championships that have been decided here has been unbelievable. You know, pretty much 2005 with the constructors, 2006, 7, 8, obviously, with that infamous race in 2008. You know, the rise of Braun in 2009 and then that infamous, you know, wet to dry back to wet race in 2012, which saw Sebastian Vettel become the 2013 world champion. But today is an historic day. We could become the first team to win a world championship with Haas. And there is the tie strategies. Leclerc, Verstappen, Perez are all on softs. So we have to follow them for this race. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. Mm -hmm. 
So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for them in today's race. But the question I'm asking is which teams have got it right, which ones have got it horribly wrong? So here we go, getting ready for the race. This could be a history-making race. Here, the first driver to win a world championship with Haas and the first team outside the top three to pretty much win a title. I believe it has been over a decade since a team other than the top three, Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull, who have won a world championship. It could happen today, though, as we get ready for five red lights. Lights out and away we go in Brazil. It's a great start by us. Terrible start for Sergio Perez. We're going to split the rebels down the middle. It's going to have the inside in towards 10-1. It's us versus Verstappen as we go downhill. Verstappen tries to take the inside line, but we're going to be all over the curb. And now it's going to be a drag race. We're going to force Verstappen wide on the exit three. And we are now into P3 here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. And we're going to try and see if we have the pace of the Ferraris to try and take the fight to the Ferraris here today. As you can see, Charles Leclerc is going to go around the outside of Carlos Sainz. Meanwhile, Verstappen is going to go down the inside in towards turn one. We're going to try and narrow the door ever so slightly and we retain position here in Sao Paulo. And these are critical laps for us in this Grand Prix if we want to try and win this World Championship. We must keep the Red Bulls behind us at all times. Leclerc tries to go around the outside and eventually he takes the lead from his teammate uh, Carlos Sainz here in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now lap five, it's all about trying to just keep distance with the Ferraris. Remember, uh, Carlos Sainz is on the medium tyres and he will have the advantage. However, it was clear that the pace of the Ferraris were too much for us and we just could not keep up with them. So, the objective of this race has now changed. We can't keep up with the Ferraris, so now our race is with Max Verstappen and the Red Bulls. The main objective now is to keep the Red Bulls behind us until the end of the race because it doesn't matter about the Ferraris, it doesn't matter about, you know, Kevin Magnussen or the McLarens. The main objective is to outscore the Red Bulls. Pretty much what Red Bull needs is for Perez to win and for us to DNF. That is what they need. And as long as we score, I believe it's two points minimum. Two points. Well, actually, it's not two points because we need to outscore Perez by two points max to clinch the World Championship. So as you can see, lap 15, we were, we've been battling with Max Verstappen in this race as Perez tries to go around the outside in towards turn one. Verstappen is going to do the undercut here in this race at Sao Paulo. He's going to go from the softs to the mediums. And it's the same strategy that we're going to be doing. Softs to mediums until the end of the race. Right, so Verstappen, end box on lap 15. We're going to respond on lap 16 here. And it's a one lap overcut. But maybe this could be the difference between winning the World Championship today and potentially losing the World Championship today. So entering the box. And I believe uh, George Russell is in. Perez is also in. He's followed us in. Um, Gasly and Ockham from the Alpine boys, they've stayed out. De Vries has stayed out. Um, and as you can see around about now, Verstappen coming out of turn one. Uh, Piastri is also ahead of, I believe that's Perez. Verstappen has jumped us thanks to the undercut. So the undercut has worked for the Red Bull. Okay, that's interesting. So now, as we enter lap 18, we've cleared the traffic and Pe um, Verstappen has overtook Piastri. We're going to dive down, down the inside of Piastri going in towards the second sector. And that is a critical move in this race. And now we have followed Verstappen on the exit of the final corner. And now we have DRS. We're going to go around the outside. And that is a net third place gain back in this race here in Brazil with only, what, 17 laps to go here in Sao Paulo and that could be the difference between winning the World Championship today and potentially winning the World Championship at Portugal in the following episode. Verstappen tries to come back with us in towards turn four but Verstappen can't quite do it and that was pretty much the story. The Red Bulls and Verstappen was trying to attack us from all angles, from all corners, from inside, from outside, from turn one, turn three, turn four and no matter what they just couldn't have they just didn't have the straight line speed to try and just make the overtake work. And every now and again, they just, they wouldn't break as late as we broke. So they've just constantly stuck behind us as the laps goes on. 
So as, as you can see, once again, I'm using the OS battery. Verstappen tries to go around the outside. And as you can see, Verstappen has the, the move done. But we break later than him. We take the Verstappen line. And we do to Verstappen what Verstappen has done to Hamilton and to so many other drivers over the last couple of years. And we retain third place. As far as the Ferraris are concerned, they are not our race. We don't care about Ferrari. They can have their petty win. But it's the Red Bulls that we care about. And as you can see, Oscar Piastri has overtaken Max Verstappen. So that's great news for us in today's race. Uh, I believe Perez is down in, I think, 6th or 7th place. He is, yeah, it's Perez, then it's Albon, and then it's Magnussen. And as you can see, there's a bit of a train forming as they go wide in towards turn 1. Um, and once again, just the balance of the car has really slowed us down in today's race to the point where there's a gap of 25 seconds to call the signs. There goes Oscar Piastri around the outs well, around the inside in towards turn 4. And Oscar Piastri takes... Third place for us, but we're going to fight back as we go in towards Sector 2. Around the outside of the double right-hander on Oscar Piastri. And that is the move of the race. And that could be critical in this race as we go on towards the final lap of this race. Charles Leclerc wins the Brazilian Grand Prix, followed by Carlos Sainz. It's a Ferrari 1-2 again in Brazil. But now the focus is going to shift back to us. As long as we complete this final corner, the impossible is going to be reality. Gene Haas, Gunter Steiner, all of their hard work ever since 2016, all their years and experience with multiple teams is going to pay off right now as we come across the line. We have won the Drivers' World Championship. Get in there. Another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers' Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. There you go. There is the celebration. As you can see, look at the garage, look at the emotion. There is Gunter Steiner hugging me. Ha ha ha! There it is, we did it, look at my engineers. We fucking did it, two whole seasons worth. We started from a midfield team, and in the space of two seasons, we have won the Drivers Championships. And there it is, we have, we've done it. We outscored Max Verstappen 35 points, we've extended the gap 10 plus points more than Sergio Perez, we've one race to go, and the gap, the gap is now incatchable we are the drivers world champions for 2024 and yeah kevin magnuson three points unfortunately red bull are the constructors champions we've actually lost second in in the constructors to ferrari and uh yeah unfortunately we can't win the constructors but we have won the drivers and that was the main point of this series to take Haas and to make them a world championship contender and we've officially done that. 28 episodes in, two seasons in, and we've done it. Thank you for watching this successful series. And we've still got one race left in Portugal. But yeah, episode 28, I did break last. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave like, share, comment, and subscribe for more F123 content. And I'll see you all in the next video. In a bit.